Howdy folks, before we get started I wanted to give you an update on the derecho storm that came through northwestern Illinois on August 10th. We had sustained 60 mile per hour winds for the better part of an hour with gusts over 100 miles per hour. It's been the worst storm I've ever seen as far as property damage and power outages. Power was out to up a million people at one point in time and they're doing the best to get it back on. Our power's back on. My parents' power just came on today, about a week later. My wife's parents are still without power. See, these are some pictures just around town. This is actually my sister's property, and they lost the whole south side of their machine shed. Now the metal's out in the neighbor's field. I'm not sure what they're going to do with it. This is a view driving down the main street through town. These are mostly oak trees that are down. Big mature trees that were just blown right over. This is an entrance cable ripped right off the house, laying across the yard. We've already cleaned up the branches there. So a big silver maple tree here in this alley, about a third of the tree split off and went across the power lines and it's actually blocking the alley. There's the power line actually laying on the alley. Of course the power is out everywhere. so. You know, it's not really dangerous. You see pretty extensive damage to the roof of that house and the tree down across the line. So yeah, quite an event, but luckily we haven't heard of anyone being seriously injured, injured or any fatalities. So we got pretty lucky as far as that goes. It's just gonna be a long cleanup. Howdy folks, welcome back. Got us a fresh one. This is a 1991 GMC C1500 pickup truck. It's got a bunch of, I would say, minor issues or typical issues for a 29 year old vehicle in our area. But the big one is it's leaking coolant and I'm not 100% sure where it's coming from. So we're gonna try to figure that out and get this little guy fixed up. Now I was watching a live stream with Erico South Main Auto recently. He was talking about how they're getting a lot of big tickets for cars that are worth very few dollars. And I got a classic example here. I gave him an estimate of around 1200 bucks to fix all the problems with this truck. And you know, it's fairly clean for a 29 year old truck in Northern Illinois, but you know, cab corners are rusted out. It's getting pretty crusty underneath. I don't know what the total value of a truck like this would be, but I'd say, you know, maybe 500 bucks, but they didn't question it. The only thing they asked me was how soon they could get it back. So. I don't know. If they've got the money, I've got the time. All right, quick look underneath. It's got a rusted out spring hanger bracket here. Super common problem in our area. I did a video, I think, about doing this on an old body South Ford. These old Chevys had this exact same design, had the exact same problem. And then also the next body style newer Chevy has the same problem. The rear differential cover is rusted through, starting to leak. You can see wet spots here and there. It's also bulged out pretty good around the gasket area, so that needs to be replaced. See, it's already got new brake lines, but check out these U-bolts on the rear axle. So I recommended that he change those. I don't know if we're gonna do that or not. Now right front lower ball joint here. She's getting pretty loose, so we're gonna replace that. That's a bolt-on style or they're riveted on from the factory and then you bolt on a new one, so not a big deal there. And then the sway bar link is broken on the same side. So go ahead and fix that while we're at it. But the big thing I suppose is the coolant leaks. He told me it was leaking coolant somewhere, he wasn't sure where. Uh, seems to be leaking from everywhere. So the whole bottom side of the engine is wet. I had the pressure tester on it overnight, so that would be why. But it's coming from up there somewhere. I don't know if it's a intake manifold or, or what the deal is. Freeze plug, something. See it's coming out of the inspection cover on the transmission. It's coming down these braces. It's basically leaking from everywhere on both sides.
Okay, pressure washing I think was a good idea. Let's see if I can show you guys what I'm seeing here. So if you look down right there, you see that white crusty stuff there. And right there. And a bit right there. That's pretty classic signs of a coolant leak. Looks like maybe the thermostat housing is leaking a little bit too. I want to go ahead and reseal that while we're at it. Okay, we're going to call this as an intake manifold gasket issue. The water pump is also leaking, so we're going to replace that at the same time. And then I think we'll go ahead and pop that thermostat housing off and clean that up, install a new gasket on that. So these small block Chevys have a coolant crossover between the two heads at the front and the back of the intake manifold and they are prone to leaking. These aren't as common as the later ones, those Vortec V8s. Those things used to leak coolant all the time. I don't know honestly how to tell from the outside what engine this is, if it's a 305 or a 350. Not sure it matters. The intake and intake gaskets might be the same. So I'll see if I can get some parts and we'll start tearing this down. It's not too bad of a job. You know, this throttle body injection is pretty simple. All right, I'm gonna try to show you guys this. Pressure tester's been on it while we were at lunch. Can you see that moisture right there? That's the back side of the intake manifold. So it's definitely leaking at the manifold. Yeah, the front side's leaking too. On both sides. Okay, start tearing things apart. I don't know how much of this I'll film. Pretty simple job, really. Book time is only three hours, so I'll try to hit the high points. There it is. See, it's been leaking out of the weep hole. I think it was also leaking around. It was also leaking around these gaskets. So, it's time. All right, I'm gonna pull the distributor. I went ahead and marked where number one is. And then I marked. Oh. There we go. So that should get us pretty close as long as we don't get the wrong gear tooth or something. We should be able to get the timing pretty close. We'll have to check it, of course, once we get done.
so I can get this heater hose while I'm right here. Quick disconnect. There we go. I'll have to see if we can find a new O-ring for that. So I peeled back all the wiring and undid all the vacuum lines on the front side of the intake. Oh man. And broke the fuel lines loose on the back of the throttle body. But then way down there, but way down here, there's a loom clamp on those fuel lines goes through one of the bell housing bolts. So I've got to take that out to get those to move. Okay, so the fuel lines are loose. I removed the throttle, the cruise control, and the kick down cable. I think the EGR valve can stay. I did remove the bracket for the map sensor, and that must be an ignition module there. I think the coil can stay. I may have to remove this bracket here for the throttle. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so now it should just be a matter of these six bolts on either side and it should come right out of there. I think we made the right call. So check out this gasket right here. There's nothing left. The other side actually pulled out with the intake when I took it out. And then the back's all torn up too. So I think that was definitely the place where it was leaking. Now, see all that carbon down there in the lifter valley? That's from that exhaust crossover I was talking about. So this port right here and that one, that's your exhaust crossover. It's some emissions thing, it's supposed to heat up the throttle body or whatever and make it, I don't know, have less emissions somehow. Anyway, the net result is that it kind of like an EGR system, it kind of cooks the oil and creates all these carbon deposits. So we'll scrape all that crap out of it before we put it back together. Okay, gasket surfaces are clean. I think we're ready to start going back together. Got the water pump. Gasket surface is cleaned up too. Okay, got a new gasket set here from Felpro. Looks like it's correct. Comes with a little tube of silicone, RTV stuff here. And that is for the front and back of the lifter valley. There is no gasket in that section, it's just RTV. And that's actually probably a better deal anyway. Sometimes they have like cork gaskets that fit in there and they, they don't work very well. I also ran a tap through all the, the threaded holes here just to make sure they're clean. I also cleaned up the bolts on the wire wheel. We are going to use some of this Permatex high temperature thread sealant on the threads because some of these holes are through holes. I know for sure these inside ones here next to the, the crossover, those are open to the water jacket on the back side. And also, I think the water pump bolts are open to the water jacket on the back side. So we're going to use some of that thread sealant. You can use, you know, I've used Permatex number two or even RTV works just fine.
So lots of theories about these intake manifold gaskets. People like to put high tech on them or put a little bit of RTV silicone on them to hold them in place. I just use a little spot of super glue somewhere outside of a critical ceiling area and that's usually usually enough to keep it where you want it. Well, I had enough left in this little tube here to do one bolt. So we're going to switch over to this Harvey brand PTFE paste. It's actually rated for the same temperature as the, the Permatex stuff, so yeah, might as well save your money and use this stuff. All right, these bolts get torqued to 35 foot-pounds. In a couple of steps, And just like a cylinder head, you want to start in the middle and work your way towards the outside. Well, the hard part's done. Now I just have to put everything back on the top of the engine. I wonder if... Well, that's the way to do it. Did have one casualty. This little boot for the PCV broke on me. So I just put a piece of hose on it for now. I'll see if I can pick up one of these tomorrow. Okay, folks, it's the next morning. Our RTV silicone should be sufficiently dry. Everything's back together except for the, the air cleaner assembly. We should be able to fire this beast up and possibly check the timing. I've got to look up how to do that. This is all electronic ignition, so I'm not sure how the advance works or any of that jazz. I did end up replacing the coolant. This is what came out of it. I don't know how it's going to look on the camera, but to me it looks kind of orange, yellow-ish. So this is a 91. This truck should use the regular green conventional coolant. I don't think GM started using Dex Cool until around 95. So probably what happened is somebody just added Dexcool to it since it's been leaking a little bit. And Dexcool and conventional coolant don't mix very well. Luckily somebody was cleaning out their garage and gave me a bunch of the old green coolant. It's just been rotting on the shelf here so I'll hook him up with some new coolant. Probably won't even charge him for that. So I'll go ahead and get the battery hooked up and we'll get to it. And by the way, I'm digging this grip mat. I showed this in a previous video hopefully if I get these posted in chronological order it's pretty awesome it's just a silicone rubber mat that you can take with you and hold your tools I just threw it on top of the battery and it works fantastically for a job like this you know where you don't have really any flat spots to work well just for funsies here's an old tool that I have this came off a Matco truck and it's just like a vinyl mat and it's got a bunch of magnets glued inside of it and this thing works pretty good too for holding your various tools. The magnets kind of kind of keep them from sliding off. Don't get too crazy. 
I don't know if they still sell this or not. This is probably, I don't know, 15 years old, but I still use it once in a while. Get to use this very much okay timing light set up i don't know where i got this thing obviously got it used it says 1986 on it so it's almost as old as me oh back here underneath of this cover there's a connector with a tan or a pink and black wire i believe that's going to be our timing advance so we're going to disconnect that and we'll leave it disconnected while we set the timing Hey, young lady, can you give us a hand? Or are you super busy? Actually, right. you can have this one. I need this one to battle. All right, smarty pants. All right, my lovely assistant is going to push on the brake and put the truck in drive. Apparently, it's supposed to be in gear while you do this. There you go. Just keep your foot on the brake. Yeah, keep your foot on the brake, otherwise we'll hit the wall. That's what I was or, or I'll be killed. This doesn't seem like a good idea. Max doesn't approve. Not happy with the timing advance disconnected. All right, put it back in park. Go ahead and shut it off. All right, folks, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera. The timing light, I'm sure, doesn't play nice with the shutter in the camera. But the spec is plus minus two degrees from, from zero. It's currently two degrees before top dead center, so I think we're going to leave it right there. Should be just fine. Well, on second thought, I went ahead and retarded it just a hair. There we go. Alright mama, fire it up. All right, folks, everything looks good. It runs good. I got our little PCV elbow replaced down there. You still can't see it. There it is. Air filter's back on. I think we're done under the hood. I'm gonna run it for a little bit, get it up to temperature. Then we're gonna change the oil and we'll move underneath and start the real fun on the ball joints and spring hanger brackets.